Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf, and uh, from the gorgeous Royal Quebec Golf Club here in uh, Quebec City. And today we're talking about do the arms remain passive or active in the golf swing? And the answer is none of the above. How about that? <laughs> so we're going to look at different um, disciplines and different tasks. And let's look at you know, how you would describe the arms and hands working in those particular aspects. So starting with tennis. For those of you who play tennis out there, you're doing a specific tennis serve. You're getting ready to smash that tennis ball over the net. There's a very specific way, specific feel that you're using, you know, to whip that tennis racket. So there's a, imagine I got a bamboo shoot over my head here and I got this sword and I'm going to slash through that bamboo shoot with this sword. Well, my intent is to slash through or my intent is to whip that tennis ball into that service box on the other side. So I'm anticipating a certain compression with that tennis ball. I'm anticipating a certain resistance from that bamboo shoot. So my body is readying for that resistance, you see? So to say, well, you gotta keep your arms like wet noodles. Try to take a divot with a wet noodle, ain't gonna work. Get in compression with the golf ball, not gonna work. Hold it like a bird. Are you kidding me? Imagine a power forehand from one back court to the next, hold it like a bird. Damn thing would be flying out of my hands in no time. So there's tennis for you. So there's a very specific amount of grip pressure and motion through that kinetic chain. So it is a kinetic chain that remains very much intact. Let's look at something else. So if I want if my job was to hammer nails one shot into a two by four all day, I'm gonna use the weight of the hammer to perform my job. So notice there's a swing of the hammer, but then there's a compression of the nail. This machine works at 40 million bits of information per second. You are Pinocchio without the strings. So just, you know, be mindful of what it would be like. So if you had a little finishing nail and you're gonna tap a little nail into some delicate plaster to, so you would feel the weight of the hammer and you would be you know, in conjunction with that so that you don't put a freaking hole in the wall, right? And you're being nice and delicate with that finishing nail. So what is it that you're going to do with this particular tool? That's how it works. So let's say I'm playing baseball and I'm going to do, you know, I'm gonna perform a little bunt. So I'm holding that baseball bat a certain way and I'm actually going to remove a lot of that compression. I'm not gonna force it forward. They're gonna to get to that ball faster. So I gotta you know, remove and deaden the impact and, and, and you know, have the, the baseball pitcher and the, and the catcher fight for it while I'm on my way to first base. Or I want a home run between first and second base and I'm waiting for that pitch that matches that picture. Now I'm moving into that and there's a very specific tone that is occurring in that kinetic chain for that ball to fly over the net. So what is it? Is it passive? Is it active? Well, you can't be thinking about what your arms are doing while this is going on. That would be sabotage on an epic scale. So what is it that you want to do with the task? Well, let's say I had, you know, uh, two different things I'm going to do with this. Cutting grass or cutting thick weeds. So if I'm cutting dry grass, very sparse, I can just go and I know I'll get through the grass. Get me through some big juicy weeds or some little, you know, some little trees and all of a sudden I'm gonna have to go with more intensity, more tone in the arm club unit. So it all depends on what you're doing. You're doing a little pitch shot out of the first cut of rough that's going to be flying on you, 
Or are you doing a full pitch from thick rough and you need to get through that thick grass? See what we're doing now? So the same thing here with a sledgehammer. If I wanted to take this and I had a big nail that I was going to drive into a nice railroad tie. So I'm going to use this hammer and send it on its way. But then I got to apply some pressure through that nail. So as that hammer is coming back down, I am bracing and that tone that I'm going to produce through my hands and arms is going to help me compress that nail. Now, if my job was to do that all day for eight hours a day versus hurry up and get the job done before the train comes, there, there's going to be a very different kind of intensity going on in there. You see what we're doing? So let's look at a couple of different eight iron shots here. So I take my eight iron and I'm going to perform I got 165 over a bunker uphill and I need to apply some, some nice spin on it to get it up there and I got the, a, a little bit of a tailwind. So I'm feeling that nice, nice intensity through the shot. There's 169 with an eight iron. And let's say I had between an eight and a nine iron. Nine iron is not enough, eight iron's too much. I got about 155. I'm gonna hit this soft little fade. So I've got little different ball position. Nice little intensity, there's 152. Soft little fade. See that, right at the front of the green. So the difference between 169 carry and 152 carry are very, very different. How did it feel like? Well, I can tell you that my grip pressure felt a little less intense with the 152, and it felt like a lot more tone going through my kinetic chain with 169. So we have this wonderful series on our premium channel called the kinetic chain series. We have a nice seven part series on that that takes you from chipping all the way to the driver on the different kinds of intensities that you're going to experience in that kinetic chain. And it's not passive or active arms. It's arms that are part of a kinetic chain moving through the ball and out towards the target. You be Pinocchio without strings. I ain't here to put strings on you. That's the last thing I want to do because your machine is brilliant. All I have to do is give you a specific task and a specific situation for that task and you will shine like a bright new penny. Okay? Enjoy that. We'll see you later on this week with Golf WRX where I have this amazing surprise for you, especially for the beginner golfer. Man, we don't do enough for the beginner golfer with WRX, and I've got a real special one for you. So if you've got a beginner in your life, stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to my channel because you really don't want to miss this one. All the best.